What's up everybody, Mr. Toolbox here with another Amazon Lumberyard video. In this episode, we'll take a look at Twitch chat play integration. We'll set up a basic scene, we'll get it wired up to a Twitch channel, and we will see how the channel can interact with our game live. So let's get started. We as creators are really spoiled for choice these days with some top-notch engines that are essentially free for our use. When you're trying to decide which to use, you'll take a look at these differentiators and see which makes sense for you. If you're interested at all in the social aspect of gaming, streaming, um, audience participation, the way that Lumberyard Editor lets you integrate with Twitch and the ease with which you can do it is really something worth considering. In fact, I think the most difficult part about wiring up a project with Twitch integration is getting the OAuth key for your, for your user. If you're following along at home, you will need a Twitch account to do this. I'm going to step through, grab the OAuth key, show you how to do it as well, so you can get that into your project. If you're working your way through the Lumberyard documentation, there's some really helpful stuff in there about Twitch integration. But this is sort of tucked away on the side. Unless you're off looking for it, you might miss it. But you'll pop open a browser, you'll head to twitchapps.com slash TMI, click the connect with Twitch button. You may be prompted to accept the connection, I've already done so. And you'll see it generates an OAuth key. I'm gonna use that in the next few steps. Yours will be different, so don't try to use mine. But make sure you grab that. I'll add a link to this website in the description below so that you have it on hand. Now that we've got our OAuth key, we can put it to use in our level. You can go ahead and click new level. I'm just gonna grab one that I already have that I know is blank. When it loads, I'm gonna click speed 10 and just fly over to the corner here. I wanna just have a good frame of reference for what we're about to do. When we get everything wired up, we're going to wanna to be able to see it working. And I think the easiest way to do that will be to grab a GM entity, head down here to objects, getting started assets, and we'll grab the GS sphere. I'm gonna drag that into the viewport. I'll put it right here in the corner just so we can watch it. So we've got this object in our level, and the next thing we need to do is give it some behavior. So I'm going to right click on the object in the scene and click Create Flow Graph. I'll name mine Twitch Test. We'll go ahead and click OK. It's going to open up Flow Graph with an empty screen. And from here, we can start adding our nodes. Next, I'm going to grab each of the nodes we'll need to make a chat play connection. I'll drag them from the node list over here out into the main window, organize them, I'll wire them up, and then we'll come back through and talk about what each does. And there we go. I'm gonna move this down here just to keep the wires a little bit cleaner. And we'll start over here on the left with the game start node. That fires as you'd expect when the game starts. From its output pin, I'm going to set a pair of strings, one to be my Twitch username. That's gonna re be required in a couple different places. So I like setting that as a string and then just plugging it in instead of typing in in each of these nodes. The other is the OAuth string. It's kind of unwieldy, so I like to just set it off to the side and then plug it in to the input pin here. So when the game starts, we'll take the output pin and we will plug it into Twitch chat play available. That's going to, as the description says, check the availability of the chat play feature. It'll see if it's up, if it's listening for connections, and if we can connect. If that comes back as available, this pin will fire. 
and we can move on to the next node, which is register credentials. That's going to get us connected to the chat play API and log us into the IRC server. From the output of that, we'll connect to our channel using the input from our set string above. And then when we're connected to our chat play channel, we can go ahead and start listening for a keyword. I use a set string down here as well. You don't really have to do this, but I set mine to potato. I'm not going to usually use the word potato in normal chat, so that seems like a decent one to make sure we're listening for something that's at least a little special. So we've got everything wired up, and the last bit we need to take care of is what to do when our chat play keyword's actually triggered. For now, since this is an academic exercise, I'll take the easy way out and head up here to debug, grab the log node, we'll drop it out here. We will say user said potato. And we'll throw this signal into the input. Something worth noticing is that the signal output of the Twitch chat play keyword node is an integer. It's actually going to keep count of the number of times the keyword has been set in chat. So if you wanted to run a loop on that, kind of count up, maybe set a threshold before some action is fired, you can do that really easily here. Something I want to make clear is that only these nodes are really required to make a chat play connection. It is remarkably easy to get connected and then get to work on what you want your game to do. So you need something to kind of start the, the chat play flow. In my case, it's just a game start, but then all you need to do is check the availability, register some credentials, connect to a channel, and then start listening for words. It really couldn't be simpler. I added a couple of debug logs just to make sure we get connected and that we can see that happening in the console, but we're ready to give it a try. So I'm gonna take this flow graph window and throw it on my secondary monitor. I'll also take my Twitch web browser and kind of shove it over here. Things are gonna get a bit cramped, but we should be able to get the point across. In the lumber yard editor, I'll press control G to switch to game mode. Now, unfortunately, that's gonna steal my mouse, but even now you can see down at the bottom, we've got flow log saying chat play connected. So we're ready to connect or we have connected and we're ready to try it out. I'm gonna alt tab out over to my Twitch window and enter the word potato. You won't see anything happen immediately because I've alt tabbed out of the window, but if I come click back in the viewport, you'll see user said potato down at the bottom. So that connection is made, it's been successful. I've got another mon or another computer here. So I'm gonna type potato into chat a couple more times and we'll see it update in real time. I'm gonna press enter now. And there is user said potato. Do it again, user said potato. Over on the right hand of the screen, you can see me entering potato and it's showing up. So we're connected and we're getting immediate feedback from Twitch when that chat play keyword is entered. I think we can agree that user said potato is not terribly interesting. So let's see if we can do any better. First, I'm just gonna make sure that that GS sphere is selected in the viewport. I'm gonna grab the flow graph window and bring it back over into view. I'm gonna put some new nodes in the flow graph and then we'll talk about what we're doing. I added these four nodes here. The first is to get the position of the sphere entity. If you've still got it selected in your viewport behind here, you can right click on the entity line and just click assign selected entity. It makes it a lot easier to actually get what you're looking for here. So when the chat play keyword signals, it's going to get the position of the entity as it currently is. And then we're gonna take the three axes, Y, X, and Z as they're labeled here. We'll pass the Y and the Z straight onto this vector builder, but we'll take the X and we'll add 10 to it. We'll take the output of that, we'll put it into this new vector we've created. And then lastly, we're going to assign that as the destination to the move entity to. So the signal fires, gets our position, also starts the add. 
We're going to build a vector, and then when the result is calculated, it's going to set the destination and then start the movement. If we've done this all correctly, I'm going to take this flow graph window, shove it back out of the way. I'm also going to smash this window down so we can see the twitch window below it. And now I know this isn't the best view, so let's shift that over as much as we can. We'll frame right up on this. We'll go ahead and press Control G to start game mode. And on my second machine here, I'm going to jump back into the Twitch chat and enter potato a couple more times. I'm going to press Enter. And you can see our sphere moving in the scene. So chat plays connected. It's listened for the keyword and now it's moving our object through the scene. So when you get that set up, you can kind of see how you could have Twitch users changing the world in which these people play games. And that's a really cool, easy thing to wire up thanks to Lumberyard Editor. Well, that's all I've got for this time. So thanks for watching. This was just a basic introduction to Twitch chat play, some basic keyword listening. There's some more interesting stuff we can do in an advanced video. We'll take a look at that integer count, look at voting, things like that. But for now, wire this up, give it a go, have some fun. Let me know how, how you get on. If there's anything I can help clarify, I certainly will. Please leave some comments below. Uh, subscribe. I'll be putting out some new videos. If you have any requests, please drop them in a comment.